If you get a cheap rate overnight to charge your car, you pay for it with an extortionate rate at peak times. The utility companies always win. How many times have you heard that one? Dave takes it on, investigates to see if a peak rate of 53 pence or more can ever make sense. Well, just a very quick thank you. I've just hit 1,000 subscribers. That's an absolutely huge milestone on our YouTube journey. And one that seemed impossible just over two months ago when I launched my very first video and got just a few dozen views. So thank you each and every viewer and subscriber. It's entirely thanks to you. And for those who do watch and like my videos but have not yet subscribed, please do, so you don't miss the next in the series. I investigated off-peak tariffs while still driving a diesel and found that any saving they offered overnight was countered with a horrendous peak rate. Utility companies were not about to make it easy to save money. Cheap car charging, yeah, but expensive home energy bill. But I quickly learned how to turn that in my favour. I knew that I was spending over £300 a month on diesel. Yep, I did high mileage, often around 25 30000 a year. And a quick, dis quick disclaimer here, no company car. I bought and ran my own cars and my employer paid me a mileage allowance. So fuel cost was not absolutely critical, but was still a very hefty sum I wanted to reduce. I also checked he would pay the allowance even if I bought an EV, and he would. Quick calculations showed that if I charged overnight at 5p per kilowatt hour and offer British gas made at the time of my investigation, and my car did 3 miles per kilowatt hour, then 25,000 miles would require 8,500 kilowatt hours at 5p each, and that equals £425 versus my nearly £4,000 on diesel. My annual electricity bill at the time was around £600 a year. So in, effort, if, in essence, if my peak period electricity price even quadrupled to £2,000 a year to get the cheap 5p off-peak rate, which it never did and still hasn't done, and I continued to receive my mileage allowance, my income wouldn't change, I would save £3,500 on car fuel. I would still be over £1,000 better off each year. My concern was not the specific amount I paid for electricity at home or on the car, but how much overall each year I paid on them both combined. But then the equation got really interesting. In a previous career, I was selling PV systems, photovoltaic, and as part of the training, and because I like to learn, we looked at the savings a typical customer could make and how much you could earn from the feed-in tariff. We found out the majority of domestic electricity use was for high power devices, washing machine, dishwasher, tumble dryer, oven. Some of it was for mid-range items like fridge and freezer, while everyday items like lights, TV, radio and kettle were relatively minor. I advised my customers who could to use their free PV produced electricity at peak production times, i.e. midday. Washing machines, tumble dryers, dishwashers, to save even more money. They still got paid for producing it, even if they used it themselves. Now, if I did the reverse of what I told my clients and switched my high-consumption appliances to the overnight off-peak rate, nearly all dishwashers and washing machines have a time delay setting, and I bought a AAA plus fridge freezer, I could cut my daytime peak rate use to about 25 or 30 percent of my total energy use. All the rest would then be at off-peak 5p rates. When I got my Tesla Model S, I had no home charger, no smart meter, just a normal fixed rate, fixed period tariff with British gas. I live only four miles from a supercharger, but for several weeks I used mainly the grey cable that came with the car, plugged into an exterior waterproof three pin socket. It charged at a leisurely four miles an hour, so if I plugged it in when I got back about six o'clock, I could add nearly 60 miles by breakfast. And if I didn't use my car at the weekend, I could add more than 180 miles. But for long journeys, I had to use the superchargers. I analysed all the EV tariffs available and finally chose EDF Go Electric 98. And it took a few weeks to switch, then to get our meter upgraded free of charge to a smart meter. The 98 refers to the number of off-peak hours I get every week, from 9pm to 7am each weekday, and then all day on Saturday and Sunday. 
the off-peak rate is currently 13.6 pence per kilowatt hour and the peak rate 53 pence. I could have taken a Go Electric 35 tariff, but that only gave me 35 hours off-peak per week, 5 hours per night at 5p per kilowatt hour, which meant I could hardly do anything overnight. The 98 tariff means that the entire house switches to off-peak every night at 9pm and stays on it till the morning. Plus, it would be off-peak the whole weekend, allowing the use of the washing machine and dishwasher and oven for Sunday roast at the weekend. That suits us much better. We changed all our major appliance usage to off-peak, bought a AAA plus fridge freezer, only used the electric oven at weekends, charged the EV overnight or at weekends, and this meant we got around 80% of our annual usage to off-peak. It resulted in only a slight increase in our ele electricity bill, but a monumental reduction in my car fuel bill. Now, my really simple mind says that if I use 80% off-peak and my house uses, say, 100 kilowatt hours a day, I'll buy 80 units off-peak at 13.6 pence and only 20 units peak at 53 pence. So 80 times 13.6 equals £10.88 plus 20 times 53 equals £10.60. So my total energy cost for 100 units is £21.48, or brown figures, 21.5 pence per kilowatt overall. And pro rata, if the house uses more or less than 100 kilowatts, kilowatt, uh, kilowatt hours a day. So with today's average standard tariff hovering around 37p per kilowatt hour, my tariff gives me 21.5 per kilowatt hour overall, unless my maths is totally wrong. My mileage has reduced in the last 12 months, but my car fuel bill has plummeted from nearly £4,000 a year at the peak, which would still have been about £2,800 at my lower mileage, to just over £1,097 for electricity over the last 12 months. And yes, that includes paying much higher rates on superchargers for 26% of my charging sessions last year. In conclusion, I still get my mileage allowance from my employer, so in total I pay a very similar utility bill to the average family, but mine now includes charging my Tesla Model S most days. And I've totally ditched my crazy car fossil fuel bill 100%. If all this seems like too much hard work, don't do it. Pay for whatever you want, it's a free world, your choice. But my total energy bill for both the house and the Tesla Model S is dramatically less than running a highly efficient petrol or diesel car and paying standard tariff for my utility bills. I'm soon to be announcing a Patreon option for any of you who would like to support my channel financially. And one of the benefits of becoming a Patreon member will be that you will have access to detailed PDF files on this subject and many other topics, helping you to enjoy your EV better and to reduce your costs. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.